welcome or welcome back to Life on the Branch. How you doing? Uh, what we're doing today, I hope it was good. I hope the answer was good. But um, what we're doing today is we are going to be doing six, if I counted right, <laughs> uh, DIYs that you can do for free for dwarf uh, and robo hamsters. Um, I say dwarf and robo, two of them will work, three of them will kind of work for Syrians, uh, but two of them will not. And that's just because of the size of the boxes that I have, but it could totally be adapted to Syrians if you had bigger boxes. You, you're following. Okay. So let's start with like the go-to. Okay. What is free that you can put in a hamster cage? It's rocky, this is better. Uh, paper towel rolls and toilet paper rolls. Now, I personally don't like doing the whole paper towel roll um, for dwarfs, like the rocky would be okay, but for a dwarf hamster, like maybe they'll get stuck or they can't turn around and they're like midway through or something. So I just prefer to use straight toilet paper rolls if I didn't have any, but this gives me an option to move on to craft number two. We are gonna build a hidey home with a tissue box and half of this. So take your paper towel tube. They're stuck together. Simply cut your paper towel tube uh, in half. side that you can turn into part of your hidey home. So this is what you need. The first thing you have to do with a tissue box is there's plastic, right? There's plastic on the inside. So you want to make sure you remove all of that. So I'm trying to figure out what the best method of doing that is. And when I figure it out, I'll tell you. Okay. So what I did was basically just push down uh, on the plastic and then pull. And then I ran my fingers through the inside uh, to make sure that there is no plastic remaining on the inside. And the nice thing is it's only at the top, so you're not like digging like, super deep into this. Okay, so now how do you use these together, you ask? For a searing, if you had a larger tube, what you could do is simply attach to the front like this, and that just provides a little more security into the box than a traditional like hide would have. Um, for us, I'm going to have this hide against the glass here, so I don't have to like actually work with this side. I'm using the back. And the reason I'm not using the side is because if you pull these apart, it's going to take the top off uh, or the bottom off. So you don't want to use those, you want to use the back. So this is against the glass, this is the front. Okay. Now you get to get your anger out and just stab the box. Don't do it over your knees like I'm doing. Okay, we've stabbed the box. We've stabbed. All right, now, I'm going to take my scissors and kind of just make sort of a X. You don't really have to make a circle. Um, just, just an X and then it should fold on itself. That is my theory. We're gonna see if that pans out here. Yeah, okay. So I've cut the X, and I can just now push these in like that. Okay, and now I just need to see if it's big enough. It needs to be a little bit bigger, so we make our X bigger. But 
the X is a lot easier to cut than trying to stab and then cut a hole. There we go. So now I can just stick the two into the hide. So you can see it from here. So it's stuck into the hide. Um, and I think that's just like a fun way to make like a cute little hide that's a little bit like more intriguing than just the tissue box. Um, especially if you want to be able to see your hamster in the hide, you can see them through the larger opening. I do want to give credit where credit is due. I'm inspired by uh, my friend who I saw um, had used it in her hamster uh, enclosure and I thought it was super cool uh, and I asked if I could put it on the channel and she said yes. So now we have one, two. What is number three, you say? Well, this bad boy. I literally am only using cardboard that I already have in my house. My plan is to make this into a sort of hide tunnel. Um, you know how you, you see on Amazon, there's like that log and it has like holes that are around it. Um, like circle holes that are cut, you know, in different places so they can just climb in and out of it. That's kind of what I'm trying to do with this, but because it's wider, um, it kind of doubles as a hide, and um, it also can be used as a place to put your wheel so that it's stable. Um, because I always put my wheels on top of cardboard, so you're getting a good amount of use from this box so, and use this as a place to put uh, a sand bath if you're using like a tub or something uh, or a water dish, a uh, food dish if you use those and you don't forage feed your hamsters. Um, so already obviously there's an opening here uh, that's the largest opening so I'm going to be cutting holes into this side which will be the like front side. Stabby stab. Bam. Stabbed. Okay. Now. Move closer to you. Hi. Uh, again, I'm using the X method. And then I will fold in the openings. Because I am not that great at art. Don't know if you could tell, but I don't think most people are. You know? Like everybody, like when they're kids, their parents are like, oh my god, it's so beautiful. And it's like this ugly freaking drawing. Then you realize later that like you're not an artist. Me too. I've made a hole in the side. Didn't mean to, but it happened, and that's a happy accident, because that's even better than what I was thinking would happen. So now I can rip this piece off, and it looks a little more cave, cave-like. One of the reasons that I wanted to make this video is because I follow um, Night Angel on Instagram, and I follow, like, I follow a number of like hamster people on Instagram and their cages always look like gorgeous um, and like I don't have the kind of money to like go in as hard as a lot of those photos um, but I also think it discourages people who like can't like buy like a ton of products at all and then they just kind of are like they end up with like kind of empty cages and hamsters prefer like lots of stuff but you can do lots of stuff for free so that's why another reason I wanted to to make this video another door <laughs> this was more of a square um, now you may be thinking like what about the cardboard that's in here um, your hamsters will be very safe like using it and it's light enough that if they do like run into it they can just move it out of their way 
Um, so you can cut it off if you want. Uh, that's what I'm gonna do. But you definitely, I, I don't think it's necessary. It's just that I'm, you know. I relieve stress by spoiling hamsters. And again, doesn't need to be perfect, like this is not perfect. But it's a lot more open for them to use and they're not gonna be running into as much stuff. I'm gonna cut these off because I feel like we might be able to use them for something else. I'm not sure what yet, but something. And again, I'm just gonna do one on this side in the middle. And I, the thing I've learned is if you want it to be a door, make sure that your uh, cross on the bottom, your X on the bottom, goes basically to the bottom. Um, and again, you just fold, 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 and fold. Bam. Look at that. Uh, and again, I'm just going to go ahead and cut these pieces, these pieces off. So this, um, I put this one on the top. These two are now raised. I'm done. That's fine. I'll put them like this. They can climb this ledge. Um, Anyhow, so now I'm gonna repeat that process for the top and I will check in with you when that's done. Okay, so I have cut the hole in the top. It looks like this. Um, again, I put it on the opposite side of this because you want the holes kind of spread out. Um, so the total tour is then nothing on this side. So I think this would be pretty stimulating. Um, but now Stan is <laughs> conveniently over here, um, and I'm gonna get his opinion. What do you think? Looks like a nice home. I think they're gonna end up settling inside of it. You think so? Yeah, it's dark too. It is dark. I was also thinking that you could put a um, wheel on top of here. Uh, if you didn't put the top hole, you know, you could probably fit like an 8 or 10 inch wheel on this thing. Yeah, yeah you could. So. That was like my other thought as well. Like, have bedding, have this, have this. And if you did that, maybe cut a hole in the bottom so they can dig into the, into the substrate. Yes. Hmm. Now this box may look familiar if you follow my hamster videos. Um, I bought uh, Night Angel products, and I'll show you them. But uh, I'll link the video up here, so if you want to see the full video, here it is, uh, where I review them. But this is my inspiration for that box. I want it to be this. I really like supporting them. Like, I have the means to support them, and they are a good, like, company for the well-being of hamsters. This box opens like this. So then you have this as a square. So that's cool. Um, and it gives you, I'm gonna have lots of extra cardboard, so bonus crap. Uh, but anyhow, uh, I'm gonna cut, uh, this is my plan. I'm gonna cut along the edge. And then I'm going to use the cardboard, this this part, because if I know it's the same height as this, because it's the lid, um, and I'm going to put a separator, in the, a divider, in the middle, so it has two sides, like the Night Angel one, and then I shouldn't be like waving scissors around. Bad example for children. Uh, put the divider in the center um, and cut a hole in it, and then cut a hole here and a hole here. Um, the obvious difference between like this and the uh, Night Angel thing is that it is not as sturdy. It's definitely sturdy enough 
for your hamster to like walk on top of. Um, but it's just something, you know, and obviously it's cardboard and it's got a bottom and Night Angel doesn't. So it is different, but in terms of like you wanting to be able to see your hamster more um, and providing them more spaces to tunnel and more places to put things on top of, like better utilization of space. You could also use a shoe box. I think that would be you know, the most likely box that you have. I just happen to have a weird box. So, here we go. Uh, as I said, this is the same height as that, which is what we want. So again, I'm cutting along the seam here uh, in order to get the divider ready to be installed. Lay it like this, I think. Yeah. And then flip up. Yeah, okay. So align align it to the edge of the box and then trace here along the box. So now that we have our markings, uh, that's where we're going to cut. Okay, so we lost a bit of the footage, um, so I'm just going to describe what I did to finish off this project. So I used the X method on the sides. Um, taking particular care not to make the holes too big, um, because the sides are what holds the top and bottom together. And I went ahead and reinforced, uh, each side with the extra cardboard that I had. After I cut the holes on the two outside edges, I cut the middle piece so that it had a square on the bottom, no X method necessary, uh, and then I glued the middle piece uh, into place, and because it's exactly the right height and width, um, it's, it's stuck in there really nicely, and when you have it pressed against the glass, uh, it should hold pretty well, um, especially if you're gluing the top and back and bottom sides. So that pretty much concludes that project. Uh, if you have any questions about it though, let me know in the comments and I can answer them for you because I, I just, I'm so sorry that we couldn't uh, capture that footage. What I've done is I've opened the bottom of the box. Um, the part with the stickers on it. So that way, I'm just gonna cut them off and I don't have to peel them off because this back side has no stickers. Ooh. It has tape, so we're gonna have to figure that out, but no stickers. Um, so, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut off the four sides and then I will hop back in a second. But I've cut the bottom off of the box. This is the floor now. So, tape. How are we dealing with it? Here's my plan. This box is like too tall anyway to fit in my 40 gallon tanks. So, I have to cut it anyway. So my thought is, I'm gonna cut it to where the tape is. Okay, that eliminates tape one. And then I'm gonna use the side pieces like this 
to cover the second piece of tape. You get what I'm saying? Glue. Okay. That's my plan for the sides. Still working on the top, but there will be a way. But the sides, we now know what we're doing. Rocky sighting. not cutting any corners. Now I'm going to fold. Wow. So then this gives me a chance to see if it's tall enough, which the cuts are, but the fold is not. So Push the fold further back. This side is like, nah. We'll do over again. Okay. Now I'm cutting on the fold. The tape on the other side matched pretty much exactly with the, the length of this piece, but this side, it does not. So what I did was I placed it on top of the box and then took my pen and draw, drew little lines so I know how high I need to cut up to. That's my update. Okay, so I went ahead and taped, or not taped, glued this to the other side. But now we have to do the opening side because if you're if you see, if, well you can't really see it from there. Okay. All right, there you can see it. So you see how there's an entrance for Rocky to get into the under part over there? Yeah, so we gotta make one of those. So what my, here's what I'm doing. It is like 1 a.m. My hand is like, Taking the side, cutting this piece before cutting the box. Because this piece we can then use to trace on the box. Which we could do in reverse, but I, I don't know. I'm doing this piece first. I'm tired of this stupid box. Okay, so I went ahead and cut one side here another side over here. The opening does not need to be very tall. Um, because you want your hamster to feel like, you know, it's like kind of underground. go a little bit taller, smidge, smidge taller, just because I want it to be the actual height that I had originally cut, but you know, with cardboard folding, it doesn't go as high, see he wants me to do some of that, but I shall make you fold. Eh. this side. 
Now, remember, we have to place this at the top, right? Like this. So, I'm gonna go ahead and glue, and then, oh, and then cut butters out. sturdy which is why I'm having such a hard time cutting through it but uh, what that means is you can get a pretty tall window to see into your see into your hamster's cage so so to make it easier for myself I cut slits up so that I can fold up more easily. Like that's easier to fold than across the whole thing. Now of course, if you wanted it to be straight across, you could totally make it straight across by just cutting up and over. But my hand is gonna fall off. So I like the stair step effect. So they enter from here, this is like the front, and then you put the back against the back of the cage, so they don't fall off of it. So it should be like this side against the glass and this side against the glass in the back corner. Um, because you don't, you want to minimize edges that they could fall off of. Um, now. We have to cover the top tape. So, how are you going to do that? You say, well, well, well. Like that. I'm going to take this piece, I'm going to put it over the tape. Um. Now, when I get a cardboard piece that is the same size as the top piece, like I was saying, so you can clean it easier, I will put that over the whole thing and then this will have been unnecessary. But I don't have that right now. Okay, so I have glued this on. No more tape. So, the whole thing together looks like this. And you have a second story for your hamster. If you like this video, click the, click the thumbs up button. If you want to see more of our content, click subscribe to join our community. Um, and have a wonderful day. Uh, and I hope you enjoyed. You know, if you have any like cardboard ideas, uh, definitely like link them below or tell me about them below because. I'm going to need probably more than this in that cage, so I'm definitely on the lookout for more crafting ideas. So, anyhow, let me just end by showing you all of the boxes together.